Hello, happy Monday. I certainly hope you had a well-rested, relaxing spring break and you're refreshed and you're ready to go. We're going to start a whole new assignment. And so this assignment is really excited. We're finally getting to color. I reminded you over and over that we're going to be using color pencils for many weeks now. And we will be talking about color theory and creating some colorful artwork. Here we have um, an overall view of an example of something that you may create. We're going to be creating mandalas and creating them very colorfully. In this assignment this week, you will need a black pen. Um, you're going to need color pencils and a pencil sharpener. So these are generally what it looks like. Uh, color pencils, if you haven't already gotten them, um, you can get them for a dollar at the 99 if you don't want to stop by the front office. The front office, I have color pencils there waiting for you and pencil sharpeners. And I think I even have black pens there as well if you need those. Um, you should have already gotten them. But if you haven't, get them today. They close, I think, at 4 p.m. So I talked about that on Friday before we left. I also talked about you looking around and gathering some materials. You don't need them right now today. I'm going to just do an overview, but you're going to need them starting tomorrow. The color pencils, the bowl, all that kind of stuff. There's four different sizes. So you're going to need like a cereal bowl size, which is between five to six inches. And that's going to be the big circle that you're going to need to trace. If you don't have one of those, maybe a CD. That's a similar size, okay? I'll put CD size. Another one that you're gonna need is a bottle cap. That's pretty easy, the little cap to like a water bottle or a soda bottle, something easy and small. So that's about mm, an inch and a half to two inches. I would say it's like one to 1 1.5 inches around there. And then you're going to need to gather two other circles in between that. Now you could use the bottom of a cup as a circle size. You could use um, both sides. Sometimes the cup is smaller on the bottom and then it's larger at the top. That's an idea, okay, to get those in between sizes. And then we'll be tracing them to look like a bullseye. So I just wanted to give you that overview. But today we're going to be talking about the actual assignment. And I'm going to go ahead and mark him tardy and get this assignment going. So I'm going to ask that we turn off the um, lights. Are you watching this on your Chromebook? Yeah. Because you guys can sit closer and watch it from the screen. It's up to you. Whatever works for you is fine. I'm sorry, I'm talking to students live in class, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and present. I hope this gets you excited. You're gonna be creating your own design, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. But we have to talk about color theory. Second semester is always about color theory, and that's really hard doing that remotely with you guys. I can't give you paints. We usually get paints and we mix paints together and make other colors and all that, but we're gonna try our best. Uh, this is the first time I've taught this assignment. So I'm a rookie, I admit it. I've never done it this way, just like the whole rest of the year. So if I make some mistakes, please forgive me. It's my first time. So I wanted to do some history about the medallas for you. So I found this really cool YouTube. Today we're going to be looking at mandala symbolism in Asian and Native American cultures. Questions. Number one, how do the mandalas from the three cultures differ and how are they similar? Number two. You know what you might want to do is just keep this in the back of your mind. Um, I'm not saying you have to jot these down and be stressed out about it. But I, I really want you paying attention. I'm going to be asking some questions in the future. Um, but don't feel too stressed. But, you know, be mindful while you're listening to about these questions. Identify three parts of a mandala and explain their metaphorical meaning. Number three, 
What do you see in your daily life that looks similar to a mark of life? Number four, if you were creating a mark of life about yourself or a theme of your choice, what colors and shapes would you choose from your choices? Mandalas in Native American, Buddhist, and Hindu culture. Mandalas are among the most ancient art forms made by humans. They are geometric designs intended to symbolize the universe from the human perspective. Here we can see mandalas in Native American, Hindu, and Buddhist cultures. You can see the geometric shapes are similar in the various mandalas, yet their stylistic choices are very different. Looking at mandalas in Native American culture, let's begin by understanding their religion a bit more closely. In fact, the concept of religion is not translatable in Native American languages because it's so deeply embedded into their perception of reality. Nature, animals, ancestors, and children yet to be born are all part of the spirit world interwoven with Native American culture. Death is perceived as a transition, not an ending. Traditions and beliefs were passed to younger generations through storytelling, rather than written down. With this mandala on the left, what do you think it might represent? Possibly a spirit or an energy, something that looks happy to me. Mandalas. Circles represent the sun, the moon, and the cycles of life, death, and rebirth. Everything the power of the world does is done in circles. When the quadrants of the four directions are nourished, they give us peace, warmth, rain, cold, strength, and endurance. Here you can see one of the mandalas and also its metaphorical interpretation, the meaning of no, the closer. colors, the directions. Here you can see oh, clearly yeah. what they represent, uh, emotional needs, I you got the and life, I guess. spiritual, yeah. different elements, different seasons. So yeah. these are indeed very metaphorical. Dream catchers. Originating in Ojibwa and Lakota legends, the dream catchers offer this paper protection for backers. The hoops represent the wheel of life. The web would catch the dreams while feathers or ladders for the dreams to enter the catcher. Gemstones, arrowheads, and beads would increase protection. Medicine wheel. Medicine wheels are sacred hoops or symbols of peace and harmony with the earth and all living beings. Its four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, the elements, air, water, fire, earth, as well as connecting Mother Earth with Father Sky, and the center represents us and how we connect to all these elements. Now we'll take a look at Buddhist culture and populist. A map of Buddhism. This map you can see how Buddhism is spread throughout Asia. The Buddhist teachings were mostly spread along the Silk Route to get Asia. And preserved by royal families, the general population, and later monasteries. Today, interest in Buddhism has come to the West, along with an interest in yoga and meditation. Buddhism, the Four Noble Truths. So here's some basic Buddhist teachings. There is suffering. Suffering is common to all. Number two, we are the cause of suffering. Number three, to end suffering, stop doing what causes suffering. Number four, everyone can live to life with the end of suffering. The Buddhists believe in karma or the law of cause and effect. What one does to others will eventually come back to oneself. This theory is more easily understood when the practitioner believes in reincarnation or death, that following death there will be another rebirth according to one's karma. Buddha's life. The Buddha was born to a Hindu royal family in India in 500 BC. Before his birth, a wise man told his mother that if her son left the palace and saw the world, he would change it completely. He escaped from the palace in his mid-twenties and witnessed sickness, suffering, and death. He 
He realized he could not be happy while others suffered, and he renounced his life as prince and lived as a beggar and a yogi until he reached enlightenment at the age of 35. Upon his enlightenment, he saw his past lives and the past lives of all other kings. He spread his teachings until his death at 85 years of age. Philosophy Unlike most religions, Buddhism is not primarily a faith-based religion. The Buddha said, believe the teachings not because Buddha told them, but because they are your experience. He also said that if science should ever prove anything other than his teachings to believe in science. Meditation and learning from a realized teacher are essential aspects of Buddhism. The three realms. The highest truth in Buddhism is that subject, object, and action are all part of the same totality, meaning that the perception of ourselves and others as being separate and distinct is false or ignorant. Meditation, the contemplation of truth, to be at peace in one's heart, similar to prayer in other religions. Mantala meaning. The circles are endless in connectivity of all things. The squares represent the start, stop, birth to death, past, present, future, nature of our apparent reality. Each quadrant is a metaphor for human perception on the physical and metaphysical level. For example, the blue quadrant represents the color blue, the direction of peace, the perception of consciousness, the element of water, the temperature of cool, the primary function of thinking and to anger is the main way of suffering for that particular quadrant. Sand mandalas. Sand mandalas are often created in a ritual process that go on for days. Afterward, they are destroyed as a fundamental teaching of impermanence. Wow, well, I got erupted quickly, but that's okay. Um, yes, so I have some further oops, information about that. I know a few students came in late and they're going to have to wait because um, I'm doing a recording right now. Oh, no. I accidentally closed the whole thing. Bear with me one second as I reopen that assignment. Luckily, it doesn't take too long to get to. Um, okay, sorry about that. So what is a mandala? And that's where it ended. I'll deal with this later. Um, a medalla is a symmetrical round design that originates in Asian cultures mainly. Mandalas are heavy in pattern and can be as complex as the artist wants them to be. And this is what we're going to be turning in. Um, we're going to do color wheel mandalas later on. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. So this is a lady that starts off with rings of circles and patterns. So hopefully this gets you excited. It's a lot of repetition. So whatever you do in one area, you do it on the opposite area and it's repeated over and over. Now hers is hardcore. We're not going this hardcore. But I just wanted you guys to truly understand the whole mandala process. It's very heavy in circles and patterns. So whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. And everyone's is going to be very different and unique to yourself. All sorts of designs that you can imagine. She's doing this on a much larger scale than what we're going to do. 
our largest circle is what the five six inch bowl and then we can build out from there as well but it's pretty neat to see how she just this is all doodling organic shapes geometric shapes If you would like to do it in a particular cultural influence, that's fine. And then she's going in with some colors and going throughout. It's gonna be a while till we get to this step, but I just wanna paint the picture of the why. We're learning this for color theory and we're learning this for pattern sake. It's supposed to be very th therapeutic. Letting your mind wander and be a part of the process. Colors and shapes represent many different things symbolically. And how you're feeling. So we're gonna experiment and layer and play with color. It's a bit hypnotic when you look at it. We're gonna be combining warm and cool colors. We won't be painting it. We'll be doing this in the color pencils. So make sure you have those. And we'll start tomorrow. Okay, this video is gonna take forever and we don't have forever, so I'm just fast forwarding a bit. <laughs> Let's see where else she goes with this. Okay. We're gonna be using basically the rainbow. All right. So now what we're going to talk about, why can't I project this? Share with groups, copy link, sure. Let me just fix this real quick. I'm sorry. Done. All I want to do is present. Okay, here we go. So now that you know um, how to mix colors, which we don't, we haven't really talked about that, you will create a mandala inspired by the color wheel. It will incorporate the 12 main colors of the color wheel and have many patterns and designs. I think I jumped ahead, bear with me. What we're gonna need to do is everybody is gonna, I'm gonna do an overview and then we'll um, get into the parts. So um, you're going to use a bowl with a diameter of five to six inches to create a circle. And then we're going to divide it into 12 sections using a ruler. I will do this step by step with you all tomorrow, but I just want you to understand the big picture today. So you will need a ruler or a straight edge. Um, for example, if you needed a ruler, I have these at the front office as well. They're little six, seven inch ruler, seven inches. Um, that's something that you can go ahead and grab or the side of a book that's nice and straight. And then you will start off with that diameter center line down the center right here. And then we'll go across section here and then we'll divide it into smaller steps. Um, then we're gonna label the colors here. And then we will use those other rings to make smaller and smaller circles. So remember how I said you're going to need four of those um, circles. I'm going to ask you guys to gather those shortly. So this will be the um, water cap. 
And then this one here is that bowl or CD, the outer edge, and then the two sizes in between. So that's gonna be really important for you to have that ready. And then we will divide it in sections and we will be playing with patterns to later on create these different mandala shapes. So um, I'll walk you through this and we'll do this step by step together. So what I would like for you to do right now is to um, gather those materials and have them ready for me. And I would um, ask that you take a picture of them and um, that way I can have that loaded and ready to go that you're ready to do this as evidence. Here's some other examples of mandalas that we're gonna create together and we're gonna need the color pencils. Okay, so here's just some fun examples. We will start this tomorrow. So I'm gonna give you class time right now to gather your materials, just like what I said on Monday, under here. So you will need a black pen, color pencils, and a pencil sharpener. Now I'm gonna put right here bowls, or four circles. Okay. And I broke that down into steps. I already talked about that. You can just scroll down right here to see what those four circles look like. Any questions before I give you class time to gather those materials? All right. You're going to um, take a photograph and you're going to submit that. This will be a proof of practice. So that will be worth five points. Actually, I'm gonna make it worth more than that. I will give you, let's say today is the 19th. I'll give you till 7 p.m. today. And I'm giving you class time right now. Please photograph your supplies to show me you are ready. To start tomorrow. That's actually not a question. Um, let me cut and paste the requirements. And if you don't have them, go to the school, the front office, and make sure you get them. The circles you got to get on your own, okay? So this, the different sizes are on the agenda. Actually, I'm going to make this 20 points. I want it to hurt if you don't do it. So I need to light a fire under you. Okay, and you will um, go ahead and gather that and um, photograph that for your 20 points. Let me put this under, I wonder if I should have made it an assignment instead. I'll put it under proof of practice today. Any questions about that? Does that make sense, everyone? Juliana, is that reasonable? I'm just concerned that this won't show up as a photograph. Juliana, are you here? This one I marked her here today. You can't add an attachment. Okay, I'm going to create it as an assignment. Sorry about that. That's what, thank you for checking on that for me. I will create it as an assignment. And it'll be 20 points. Sorry about that. So I haven't used proof practice in so long and I get a little rusty about 
7 p.m. Perfect, thank you for looking into that for me. Photograph materials as proof you are ready. Okay. So just put them all in one photograph for me. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and assign it. Ah, I need to sign that as an assignment and I didn't. I'll put it under assignment right here. Okay, so gather your bowls and I'll delete this other one. Perfect, thank you for letting me know. You guys are like the first period I teach this, so I crack a couple of eggs every once in a while. My apologies. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video, and I'm going to post that on the agenda and help anyone that has any questions or needs any grades, anything you need.